Welcome back. My name is Dr. Carl Baird, and today I'll be taking you through a simple 15-minute movement and strength routine to help you treat degenerative disc disease in your lower back. So it's easy to go on the internet and find what exercises you should be doing to help treat degenerative disc disease. But what I want to do with my page is help people take action because again, it's this consistent action over time that's going to be the key to solving degenerative disc disease, easing pain, helping you keep active and maintain your life as you get older. And sometimes it's as easy as just following along with the workout. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll take you through all the moves. Our first three moves will be designed to help ease the pain and stiffness that's associated with degenerative disc disease. We're gonna start with the cat cow, which is performed on our hands and our knees. So let's go ahead and get into position. We want our knees right under our hips. We want our hands right under our shoulders. And we're gonna start with the cat. So we're gonna arch our back, press through our hands to arch the back, let the head hang, tuck your pelvis in. You can really push through the arms to stretch out that mid back. And then the cow is gonna be the opposite where we're gonna lift our head, drop our stomach, roll our pelvis out. And we're just gonna move back and forth between this movement. Again, we're just trying to work out any pain and stiffness. One direction is painful. Just stop before it gets into that pain range. So you might limit the range of motion. And as you warm up, you'll notice you'll probably be able to go a little bit further each time. Good. And now we're going to go on to our side. We're going to stack our shoulders and our hands out in front of us. Hips stay stacked. You can use something for a pillow if you want. And what we're going to do is a side lying twist. So from here, I'm going to take my top hand and just reach behind me, trying to keep my hips and knees as flat as I can. It's okay if it comes up a little. And then we're going to go back to the starting point. And then just slowly bring our arm back. So again, more gentle movement, just designed to help ease pain and stiffness. This type of movement is the best thing you can do. Warm up your spine and help with the pain. Nice stretch in the lower back as well. But again, you do want it to be active. You don't just want to hold the position here, even though it does feel good. You do want to get that gentle movement in the spine. Good. And then we're going to switch sides. So you're just going to roll over onto your left side. Same thing. Hip stacked, knee stacked, shoulder stacked. Take that top arm and twist the opposite direction. Slow and controlled. Again, you want it to be active, so just keep moving. Good, should start getting a little looser now. Pain starting to ease a little bit, not quite as stiff. Trying to keep those hips and knees stacked. Don't let them open up. Last one here. Good. All right, let's move on to our back. This is going to be the last of our movements. We're going to do what are called windshield wipers. So we're going to start with our feet as wide as we can. And then all we're going to do is just drop our knees to the same side. So like windshield wipers, I'm going to drop my knees to the right. And with this one, it's okay if my lower back comes up off the ground a little bit. Again, we're just getting that gentle movement in our hips as well as our lower back. You do want to keep it moving. Again, you don't want to hold a static stretch at the bottom. 
Again, just going as far as you can. You don't need to push it. What you'll notice as you start to warm up is that you'll be able to go a little bit further each time. But again, all we're doing is getting that gentle movement in the lower back, a little rotation, and it should feel pretty good on that degenerative disc. Nice work. 20 seconds left. Should be feeling pretty loose, pretty good. All right, so we're gonna start transitioning into our strength movements. So the next thing that we wanna focus on is how to build the strength to limit the impact that goes through these discs to prevent this degenerative disc from progressing. Again, if there's arthritis in your disc, there's not much you can do to get rid of it, but what you can do is stop it from getting worse and take away the pain so that you're able to keep active and maintain your life. You don't need injections, you don't need surgery. So first exercise we're gonna do, dead bug. So to perform, I'm gonna get my feet into what's called this 90-90 position. So hips at 90, knees at 90. I'm gonna put my arms straight up, and then we're gonna do opposite arm, opposite leg. We're just gonna tap the ground, come back to the starting position. Good. Go ahead and follow along with me. I'll point out a few things that you wanna watch for. First thing with the dead bug is you wanna watch that your lower back doesn't arch up off the ground like that. That's a sign that the core is not str quite strong enough. And if that's the case, I would take out the arms and legs and either start with just your hands or start with just your legs until your core is strong enough to do both while maintaining that nice core position right there. The other thing you want to watch out for is that as your one leg goes down, the opposite doesn't come up like this. A lot of times they do that to, your body will naturally do that to try to decrease the tension, but we want that tension. That tension is going to be what protects your spine. All right. Good. Next, we're moving into our glute bridge. So all we're going to do, we're going to put our feet down about hip width apart. Arms at 45, we're going to press through our feet and bring our hips up. This is, you're going to feel it in your glutes and your hamstrings, and then you're just going to come back down. So if you have any sort of joint pain, I mean, I'm talking not just back pain, but knee pain, ankle pain, strong glutes are a requirement if you're trying to actually solve the problem. And so some variation of the glute bridge I include in pretty much every program that I put together for clients that I work with in the clinic because having strong glutes and hamstrings is so important. And unfortunately, our lifestyle is one where there's a lot of sitting. And when we're sitting, guess what we don't use? Our hamstrings and our glutes. In fact, they just kind of turn off. They don't do any sort of work. This is a great way to act them up, the glute bridge. It's safe, there's limited impact on your spine, but it's also very effective at targeting those muscles. Good, okay? We're gonna go ahead and move into our side plank. So, what we're gonna do with our side plank, we're gonna start on our knees. Now, if you feel strong enough to go onto your toes, you can do that as well. But what we're gonna do is elbow right under the shoulder, so you don't wanna go too high, like that. Knees slightly out in front, and then you're just gonna lift your hips up off the ground. So when you're at the final position of the plank, you want your body to be in a nice straight line. And again, you don't wanna start rounding forward. That's just gonna put some pressure on your shoulder. We're gonna aim for 30 seconds here. If you gotta take a break, it's okay. Just take a break, bring your hips back down. And each time you do this routine, you're gonna to try to go a little bit longer each time. I promise it'll get better. Good, we got two, one, 
And then we're going to switch sides. Same thing. We want our elbow right under our shoulder, knee slightly out in front, and coming in to our side plank. Another 30 second hold. Okay, if you got to drop out, just try to get back into it as quick as you can. These are strengthening our obliques, really important stabilizers of the lower back. It's going to limit the impact that goes through that spine. Good, we got five seconds left. You got it. Two and one. Good. Next, we're going to go back to our hands and knees, and we're going to do what's called a bird dog, another important um, core strengthening exercise. It's almost the opposite dead bug, where instead of on our back, now we're on our hands and knees, but we're going to do the same thing where I'm going to send one leg back, the opposite arm in front. And we want to hold it for about five seconds, come back down, and switch sides. So if this is difficult for you, again, I might make it look easy, but for a lot of people, there's a lot of wiggling and shaking. It's okay to start with just your feet. And again, we want to focus on creating that tension in the glutes right there. Keep going. Find what variation is good for you. What you want to avoid is lifting the legs so high that you start to arch in that low back. You're reaching for length, not for height. Good. Let's do one more each side. Again, I'm reaching my heel towards the back wall, my hands towards the front wall. Last one. And done. Then we're just going to start back at the top with our cat cows. So we're already in the right position. We're going to do hands under our shoulders, knees under the hips. Start with the cat. Letting the head hang, tucking that pelvis in, arching the back. Cow is just the opposite. So you should notice that it feels a little bit better the second time around. You should be nice and warmed up. Not quite as stiff. Doing good. What you find when you're using strength to solve pain, you don't need a lot of variation in your exercises. What you need are effective exercises and you need to do them consistently. That is the key. You don't need, again, a lot of these YouTube people get real crazy trying to come up with new stuff or stuff that's entertaining, but for results, simple's best. Good. All right. Moving on to our side. We're doing those sideline twists. Open up. This is one of my favorites. Always feels really good. Trying to keep our hips and knees on the ground. So a few things to keep in mind about degenerative disc disease, just as we're going through the movements here. One, it's a normal part of aging. Again, a lot of times doctors really try to freak people out about this degenerative disc disease. But it is a normal part of aging. If you took an x-ray of my spine right now, you'd probably see a little bit of degeneration. Where it becomes a problem is, is if it gets really advanced. Good, we're going to switch sides onto the other side. So just make sure if somebody told you you had degenerative disc disease, that you understand that it is normal to an extent, especially as you get older. What's not normal is when it starts impacting your life and your ability to do the things that you want. And that's when you should start seeking help. Second thing is that the traditional approach has got it all wrong. 
and especially if you go any sort of Western medicine, their only goal is to manage symptoms. And so they give you a lot of different ways to ease the pain and stiffness without actually fixing the problem. And what happens as they, you know, it helps you live without pain, which is a good thing, but the condition's actually getting worse because you're not addressing the thing that's leading to the disc degeneration, which is the impact at the spine. And so that's why, again, movement and strength are gonna be the best things you can do. Let's move on to your back. All right, windshield wipers. So feet as wide as they can, both knees to the same side. We're gonna keep our shoulders down, but it's okay if our hips come off a little bit. So those are the things I always like to keep in mind as I'm working with somebody with degenerative disc disease. One, don't freak out. It's normal to an extent. It's not normal when it starts impacting your life. And what we want to focus on is how can we get you back to doing those things and not just taking pills and injections and surgeries to help with the pain without addressing you keeping active and doing what you love. Because when it comes down to it, that is what is most important. Good. Again, should be feeling a little looser than the first round. It feels pretty good. You can get your knees a little bit lower. Maybe okay to push it a tiny bit this time since you're nice and loose. Good. Okay, into our dead bug. So, hips at 90 degrees, knees at 90 degrees, arms right out in front, opposite arm, opposite leg. Really make sure you're maintaining that nice strong core position, not letting your back arch up off the ground. If you're having a hard time, Start with just your feet. No point in going too hard and aggravating your discs. That's the opposite effect of what we're going for. Good, keep going. You need to take a break. It's okay to take a break, but we got 10 seconds left. Try to fight through it, even if you just hold that dead bug position. That's better than putting your feet down. And done. Okay, into our glute bridge. Feet hip width apart, pressing through the feet, bring the hips up and back down. Hips up. Again, we're targeting these glutes and these hamstrings. If you're feeling it too much in the quads, it probably means your feet are too close to your hips here. So just bring the, your feet out a tiny bit. If you're feeling it too much in the hamstrings and not very much in the glutes, it probably means that your feet are too far out. So you want to find that perfect balance. Usually your shins should be vertical when I'm in the top position here. Can't tell if they are in this video, I hope they are. But again, I feel it in the glutes and the hamstrings. As long as I feel it there, I'm doing the right movement. Last one. Two more movements after this, you got it. All right, into our side plank. So again, elbow right under the shoulder. Knees stacked, lifting the hips. We're gonna go 30 seconds. If you need to take a break, it's okay to drop the hips, but try to get back into it as quick as you can. The more you do this, the stronger you'll get, the easier it'll be. And that's what's really fun, right? When you start with this very first workout, you can only hold it for 15. A week later, you're holding it for the full 30. Like, hey, I got stronger, this is working. All right, great. Good, we got three. Two, one, all right, switch sides, same thing. Keeping your elbow right under your shoulder, hips up, hold it for as long as you can. We just got this round, 
and the bird dog left. And then we get a break. You got it. Ten seconds left. Five. Three. Two. One. Good. Let's move in to our bird dog. So, all fours, reach our hips straight back, arm straight forward. Hold for about five seconds, back down, and switch. Again, we're reaching for length, so I'm reaching toward the back wall and the front wall, not going so high that I overextend at the back which usually causes a little bit of pain. Should have built up a good amount of heat. I'm starting to sweat a little bit here. Feels good. Again, these simple movements doesn't take a lot. But when you're solving pain with strength, what takes precedent is control. Precedence is control and safety. You want to make sure that these movements don't aggravate your lower back and do the opposite effect. And we're done. There you have it. Nice work. So the goal is to continue with this routine three to four times a week. And what I'll do is I'll make another video that progresses it slightly harder so you can always continue to get better, get stronger, so that you can successfully treat degenerative disc disease in your lower back without drugs, without injections, without surgery. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I do read them all and I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, it's Dr. Baird here. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page to catch all our videos designed to help you build the strength and confidence to live active, healthy, and happy lives. You won't find it anywhere else.